Wrigley Field in Chicago. It's Major League Baseball as the New York Mets beat our Chicago Cubs. Participating advertisers in this afternoon's game are Low and Brow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Low and Brow. True Value Hardware Stores. True Value, more than just a name, it's their way of doing business. Union 76 and your neighborhood Union 76 dealers who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. Canon, so advanced, Canon is the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography. Toyota Motor Sales and your Toyota dealers who remind you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. Zenith and yours, Zenith dealers. At Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. United Airlines, people who fly for a living, choose United. And by the Association of Chicagoland McDonald's Restaurants, you deserve a break today. This copyright telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has the right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. Yankee Willie Randolph, he does it all. Pro photographer Fred Conrad, he catches it all with his Canon AE-1 program. More advanced to capture Willie's sheer grace at second base. More camera to follow Willie all the way home. Hey, can I try your Canon? Sure, it's simple. In sun or shade, it's a snap to use. Uh -huh. The Canon AE-1 program, so advanced, it's simple. And more of both. Canon, the official camera of the Chicago Cubs. It's Chicago Cubs Fan Appreciation Day sweepstakes. You Cub fans are the greatest. So your Chicagoland Toyota dealers are giving away this 1982 Toyota long bed diesel pickup truck. To enter, just fill out an entry form at any of the 28 Chicagoland Toyota dealers or at Wrigley Field. It's sure worth cheering about. This diesel is Toyota's best mileage truck. Toyota trucks are the best-selling import trucks in America. Oh, what a feeling to win a new Toyota on Fan Appreciation Day. Enter now. It's a beautiful day for baseball. Hello again, everybody. This is Harry Carey at Wrigley Field. Before we talk about today's game at all, and the Cubs are shooting for their seventh in a row, and by the way, it's a beautiful afternoon, and if you're in the neighborhood, come on over. There's plenty of time for you. Our guest here in the booth, as you see, is Ray Greeby, who's a director of player relations for the major leagues. Ray, you know, it's, it's ironic I should see you today. What with the football players now having gone on strike? You ought to pick up the telephone and call their attorney. You ought to be able to give them a lot of help. <laughs> Harry, the nicest thing that's happened to me in baseball is we're not involved in a strike this year, and I'd like to help them, but they'll do a good job on their own, I'm sure. Well, there's a big difference, though, in the situation between the baseball players and the football players. For example, I notice it seems to me already uh, that th th there aren't as strongly unified the football players as the baseball players seemingly were. I think that's true from press reports. The baseball players were a very well-knit group, but you have to consider they come up through the minors together, they play together longer in the major leagues than the football players do, and they also have a union situation in which they're paid to belong to their union through a licensing arrangement. It costs them nothing where football players got to shell out a little money each game, so there's a little unity in baseball. I'm just uh, wondering, with so much more money involved in football, where there's no question about the fact that every owner must reap quite a profit, whereas in baseball, there are a lot of teams, maybe that are bar barely breaking even, if that, you wouldn't think that the uh, almighty dollar would be such a factor when you got so much of it coming in. Well, each party in the negotiations has to speak for themselves, but I tend to agree with you. Uh, just to illustrate, uh, the players in football have been offered more money for a five-year contract than all of baseball will gross in six years. Is that true? Yeah, that's correct. So there's, there's a lot of money there, and I think, therefore, that uh, it should be a short strike, and hopefully they'll resolve it. I'm just wondering, uh, maybe the salvation for baseball would be the day that the owners of every club will be given 15 million dollars from television and radio before the season even starts i think even a moron like myself could operate uh, uh successfully with that kind of income well certainly that going in money at the start of each season helps a football club 
plus the fact they have no minor league expenses as baseball does and a lot of others whereas in baseball this year unofficially Harry I guess there'll be only two teams in the National League to break even or make money this year what is the uh, what is the future uh, uh, I know that you don't have to worry about anything so far as player contracts are concerned until 84 but uh, with cable TV all these other sources of income that we read about uh, uh, I can visualize the day maybe when the winning share of the World Series is going to be two million dollars per man don't know honestly don't know the answer to that Harry it's a matter of great speculation and debate amongst the baseball owners we're wrestling with that question now we're also in litigation with the Players Association with respect to uh, television income right here in Chicago as a matter of fact the most centrally located town and I don't know what the outcome is going to be great thank you very much thanks Harry good luck to the Cubs all right our national anthem with a ball game following this. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. A beautiful afternoon for baseball. If you're in the area, come on over. A lot of room for you. And what, what else is there to do on a wonderful afternoon like this? So get your cold beer here instead of where you're watching the game. <laughs> Enjoy talking to Ray Grebe, who's the well-known Chicago attorney, of course, and play, director of player relations for the major leagues. He was so prominent in the baseball player's strike, I thought it'd be particularly fitting to talk to him today, what with football now involved in the same sort of a situation that baseball was in a year ago. So many thought that perhaps football would profit and benefit from the experience of the baseball strike but seemingly they have not. They just announced that tomorrow night's game, football game, has been canceled. So there is a, another fatality so far as the NFL is concerned. The lineups for the Mets. Wilson in center field. Gordon Heyer at short. Foster in left. Kingman at first. Jorgensen in right. Brooks at third, Bochi the catcher, Giles at second, Scott Holman the pitcher. For the Cubs, Sandberg at second, Hall in center, Buckner at first, Moreland in left, Johnstone in right, Tabler at third, Kennedy the shortstop, Butch Benton the catcher, and Randy March the pitcher. Randy into the windup, the first pitch of the ball game is on the way to Mookie Wilson. He had a cut of the middle. Randy Marsh is the plate umpire. Bob Davidson is at first. Harry Wendelstead at second, and Ed Montague at third. There's a slider at the knee. Jody Davis out of action today. Remember when he bumped into Madlock at third base yesterday? He suffered a contusion and being rested today. Hey, struck it out on three pitches. A slider or a palm ball make it that broke into the dirt. And Mookie Wilson goes down swinging. Mookie hitting 281 for the year with five homers. 
Here's Ron Gardner hit his second home run of the year yesterday and had won a ball game from Montreal, two to one in the tenth. Ron Gardenhier, batting 231 for the year, two homers, 29 RBI. Randy Martz is pitched. Right in there, a beauty, a strike call. Martz shooting for his 11th victory of the year. Never before in his professional career, there's a smash, fair ball down the third base line. Gardenhier on his way to second base with a double. Gardenhier ripped one past Tabler between the line and Tabler, no chance to make any play. A double to left. March got that ball right down in there where you can pull it inside corner just under the belt buckle and pull it he did. And when he rambles into second here, Gardenhire will have his 16th double of the year. Here's George Foster hitting only 246, 13 homers, 68 RBI. 58 different times this year, Foster has been the batter for the Mets with a man on third and less than two out and has failed to drive him home. There's a guy supposedly going to make close to two million per year. There are a lot of stories about him receiving a one million dollar interest-free loan to sign with the Mets as a free agent. Here's a pitch by Martz. There's a line drive, right field, going to be caught. Johnstone is there. Gardenhire fakes tagging up, goes back to second. Johnstone got a long high throw, one out in the tabler. Two gone. Foster hit that ball hard, but right at Johnstone. Here's Dave Kingman. He's only had 104 hits this season, but he's driven in 96 runs. 37 of those 104 hits have been homers. He has struck out 142 times while batting 210. Against the Cubs, he's hitting only 171. He's had two homers. Good for two RBI. Butch Benton goes out to talk to Randy March. We got our first look at Benton, who had a great year with the Des Moines, Iowa club. You know, when they drafted Butch Benton, it was between Benton and Dale Barra. But at the time, Benton was the phenom in the country. He was just an outstanding catcher. Now ready, here's the pitch. And it's a slider outside. One ball, no strikes. The NFL football game scheduled for tomorrow night has been canceled because of the strike. Dave Kingman digging in. Started a swing and he held up. It's 58 degrees on the lakefront, 60 degrees at O'Hare. The wind out of the north blowing in 13 miles an hour. So it's a tough wind to hit home runs through. It'll take a line drive to do it. A high fly ball will be pushed back in to the ballpark. Two balls, no strikes. Benton calling the side. Here's a smash. Whoa, what a play by Tabler, but he was on a short hop, a trap. He did not catch the ball in the air, and it was in foul territory. Well, just by inches, but what an effort he made. Boy, there's a, as quick a reaction as you'll see a third baseman make. He really did a job on that ball, because this ball was whacked. Low line drive, whistling for the corner. Now watch Tabler die right there, but you see it is foul. The third base umpire there is Ed Montague. Two balls and a strike on Dave Kingman. Big, powerful athlete. The pit. Pass ball low. Ball three. Butch Benton, who originally signed with the New York Mets. He played with the Mets in 78 and in 80. Benton calling the signals. 3-1 pitch. Swung and he missed and Kingman was really going for it. He's trying to cut through that wind. 
A full count of three and two now. Kingman, who stands 6'6", six, six, weighs 210. 34 years old. Never seems to gain a pound, either. The pitch. Line drive, left center field, the first run of the ball game. And Kingman has singled the left center. And the Mets are out in front. One to nothing. Kingman hit a 3-2 pitch. Let's watch it. A little higher than he wanted it, as far as Randy Martz wanting it. And Kingman didn't overswing that time. After he did on the preceding pitch, he just took a nice level swing that time and gets Garden higher home. That's his 97th run batted in. He's had a total of only 105 hits. That's almost averaging for every hit an RBI. One strike and nothing now on Jorgensen. First baseman outfielder. High pop foul out of play. Mike Jorgensen, the hitter. You'll be Brooks on deck. It's only the second earned run against the Cubs pitching in their last 24 innings. Randy Martz. There's a high pound foul. Out of play. Two strikes and nothing. Two men are out. One to nothing in favor of the Mets. The ball game in the top of the first. He didn't mean to swing. He fouls the pitch off. Two strikes and nothing. Final game of this homestand tomorrow. Then the Cubs hit the road for a week. Three games in St. Louis starting Friday night. All of which will be televised. Then two in Philadelphia, two in New York. All will be televised. And then we return home to close the season with games a week from Saturday and a week from Sunday. And then it'll be Fini. Here's the pitch. Foul tapped again. Marla Cullen getting a nice hand from the crowd. Two strikes and nothing. Mike Jorgensen batting 236. Line like a bullet in the right field. Throw, the ball gets by Jay Johnstone. Here's Kingman going to score easily. Now Johnstone falls down out there and is lying on his back. <laughs> Boy, that's what you call really butchering up a play. A line single is turned into an, a run for the Mets. And Jorgensen winds up the third. Watch that again. Ball is hit hard, no doubt about it, being a sharply hit single. But Johnstone, it rolls right up his glove, then behind him. Kingman at second sees well. I'll take off. Now watch Jay put a little icing on the cake. Spikes wouldn't hold. We had a little rain here this morning. But the run scores. It's a single, an E9, no RBI. Here yeah, now is uh, Hubie Brooks, batting 257. One homer, 36 RBIs, two to nothing in favor of the Mets. There's a pitch foul back. Well, let's don't have one of those turnarounds where you knock three pennant contenders on their ear <laughs> and then mess it up against the club that's below you. A ball and a strike. The pitch. Line right at the second baseman, Sandberg. Boy, old Martz goes in and pulls himself together. They had nothing but shots off them in the city, even though there was a costly air. So it is two runs, three hits, one air, one left. We go to the bottom of the first, the Mets two, the Cubs coming to bat. W -G 
Roger, I think this is one of the best movies I've ever seen. You've got to be kidding. I'd rather die than see this movie again. <laughs> I'm Gene Sisko, film critic of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert, film critic of the Chicago Sun-Times. Join us this fall for At The Movies, the movie review program. Premiering September 25th here on Channel 9. WGN, Carrie and Milo Hamilton were back at Wrigley Field. There you see Ferguson Jenkins picked up the 276th victory of his career. There's Willie Hernandez right next to him. And there's Steve Henderson. The United Farm Bureau, under the direction of Lee J. Sladek, from Plymouth, Indiana, are here. You know, Plymouth High School, Plymouth, Indiana, won the Indiana State High School Basketball Championship this past winter. And boy, when you win that state title there, you you got a great basketball team, no doubt about that. Here is Sandberg. <laughs> To lead it off. One ball, no strikes. Ryan hitting 269 for the year. Scott Holman, a rookie right hander, throws high. They say he's not too fast. He's 0 1 for the season. Boy, in 81, they brought him up at the end of the year. He thought he was their new prize package and doesn't always go that way. He hurt his shoulder and had to climb back. Two balls, no strikes. There's a strike call. Speaking of Plymouth, Indiana, and, they, and their high school champions there, there's a bouncing ball to Gardner. That'll be easy. Throws to first for the uh, boy. Nothing's really easy when Sandberg's going down the line. Even a, even on a routine chance like that, it's a bang bang play. Here's Mel Hall. Want to send greetings along to two great Cub fans. Jack Lybrook and Craig Timmy in Bloomington, Indiana. Hope they're enjoying the ball again. Here's Hall. There's a smash, but right out to second baseman Giles over the first for the out. There's Hall on the first pitch again. Two men up, two men down. Here's Bill Buckner. Sergeant Hughes telling me about a good friend of his, Luke Bajak, of the Vendors Union, who's at Vets Hospital. We wish him a speedy recovery. Luke Bajak. Two out, nobody on. Bill Buckner, the hitter. Buckner within one of his career high for homers, 14 which he hit in 1979. He's already broken his career high record for a runs batted in, which was had been 75 last year. He's already got 99. He's closing in on his career high of total hits, 193. There's an off-speed pitch in the first strike call. A ball and a strike. Buckner digging in. Scott Holman on the hill. Right to the first baseman. Kingman has it. Steps on the bag. The Cubs are easy in the first. One, two, three. Nothing across. At the end of one, the Mets two. The Cubs nothing. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. This is Bruce Bucci, the captain.
Frank Howard at third. Harrelson was one of the key men for the Mets. There's a pitch swung on and popped up on the infield. Who's going to get it? Sandberg shading his eyes. Makes the catch. Bochy popped to Sandberg. Remember the everybody was watching the Cubs and the Cardinals in 69. The Cardinals were left at the post with a very heavily favored team which had won in 67 and 68. And everybody was focusing their attention on whether the favorite Cardinals could overhaul the Chicago Cubs who had built up a substantial lead. Silky Sullivan, known as the New York Mets, came roaring down the stretch and won the whole ball of wax. Not only did they win the divisional playoffs in the National League pennant, but also the World Series. There's a long drive hit by Giles way back. That ball might be out of here. It could be. It is. Holy cow. Against the wind. A line drive high into the left field stands. And Martz is trailing three to nothing. Giles' third home run of the year. Boy, watch him cream this pitch. Breaks out in strange places, but when you get a ball up around the letters and you're playing in a big league game, you wouldn't be here if you weren't one. You are crank up on that one, and that's just what he did. His third home of the year. Here now is the pitcher, Scott Holman. Now the pitch, ground ball hit down to the shortstop. Kennedy throwing the first in time. Two gone. Three to nothing. The Mets are leading. Cubs are going to have to come from behind today. Cubs have been playing like world champions since August the first. The only team with a better record since that time. Has been Los Angeles. One ball, no strikes. Since August the first. Mookie Wilson fouls it off. The Dodgers have won 30, lost 17. The Cubs have won 28 and lost 18. And the Cardinals have won 29 and lost 20. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hey, swings and he misses. Boy, Martz, even, even that pitch was high. Even the one that uh, Wilson swings and misses on. He can't get the ball down today. Two strikes and a ball. A little bit high. Two two pitch. Lined in the right field. Another base hit. Johnstone comes over. There goes Mookie Wilson. There's a throw down in time. Wilson doubles to right. That's a fifth hit off Martz. And three of the five for extra bases. Yeah, they're doubling him to death here. Jay gets over and gets this one, but with Mookie running, you know that's a double. The minute he leaves the bat, and he's got 23 of those two baggers. But Randy has got to put something together here. Here's fact, Ron Gardner. Billy Connors is going to have a little chat before he lets him throw another pitch. Pitched so well at Montreal the other night. In fact, he's pitching so badly here now. Not only a visit, but the bullpen's going to get busy. Marlene Wells of WGN here with a group from the Continental Baking Company who are enjoying the ball game. Not exactly the score, just the ball game. And pretty Marla Collins as she runs back and forth. All right, the little conversation is over, and here, Garden Hire, who doubled in the first inning, steps up there again. The 
Pitch a little bit outside. Kelly Seaton of WGM with his group from Continental Baking. Also, you're watching Cubs baseball through WGN Channel 9, Chicago. There's a shot in the right field. Here's a run around third. John Stone fires towards the plate. Misses the catcher completely, and Randy Martz backing up the plate. Caught the throw on the fly. And boy, this crowd a little unhappy about the way things are going. Four to nothing Mets. Randy Martz and Jay Johnstone might like to go back home and get up again. Well, they've had some day here. Johnstone's throw must have gone a mile high over the cutoff man, over the catcher. March caught it behind the home plate on the fly. That's going to be a March just hasn't had a thing here today. And this is what is the big, big dilemma of the cup. Even when they go through a good stretch of baseball, the inconsistency of their starting pitchers makes itself felt and known. Now, March has been pitching pretty well. But today he comes out against the Mets and has nothing. Here's Mike Crowley. Excuse me, gentlemen. March, in an inning and two thirds, allowed six hits, three of them for extra bases, and four runs, and leaves with a man at second base and two out. Gardenhire is two out of two. Giles hit a home run. We're talking about how difficult it would be to hit home runs today with the wind blowing in at about 13 miles an hour, but <laughs> Giles made it look ridiculously easy. He had one about halfway up into those seats, and he's not known for home run power. Mike Crowley, who's won four, lost three, and who's done really yeoman work in this thankless early relief job. Come what on. a job he did there the last time we were there in that five-game series. We won three, and he won all three of them. That is some outing when you get that kind of a job. It was either feast or famine, because of the five games, he won three and lost one. So he figured in four of the five decisions. So he needs to do a job here. Somebody's got to put up a red flag here and shut these guys off. And George Foster, who has fanned 110 times this year, making in excess of a million dollars per year, hitting only 246. The Cincinnati Reds are not exactly bemoaning the loss of Foster, even though their team is in last place. There's a pitch swung, and he fouled it into the, his own dugout. They'll wave the white towel of surrender. There it goes. See? It always happens. George Foster, veteran outfielder. He tested the free agency last year, and he liked what he found. Buku money, millions. Here's a slatter outside. This fella, 58 times, I think I mentioned this, 58 different times this year with a runner on third and less than two out, failed to score. There's a slatter a little bit. He went around, they appealed to the first base umpire, and Bob Davidson indicates that he went around. So ahead of him now, two strikes and a ball, Mike Crowley. In relief, Martz has been knocked out. The pitch. Half swing. Base hit to right. Another run will score. Are you sure this is the last place New York Mets that we're playing here today? They look like the world champion. Foster trying to stop his swing. Watch this. Maybe that's a new way to hit. Well, he left those 58 guys on. He figured he'd try another system. <laughs> well, those men he left on were on third base with less than two out. <laughs> this guy was on second base with two out. Well, he's working on it for next year. 
If he keeps doing that, he'll uh, renegotiate his contract, which already has produced, according to the press, an interest-free $1 million loan, which at about 15% interest, he'd be able to pay back the interest in a hurry, the loan in a hurry, that is, from the accumulation on the interest. Here's Kingman, and he fouls a pitch back. One strike and nothing. That run two is charged to Martz. Martz allowed in an inning and two thirds. Six hits, five runs. The pitch to Kingman. High towering fly ball, short right. Sandberg's calling to the ball in short right field, and he makes the cut. So, three runs, four hits, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom of the second. The Mets five, the Cubs nothing. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field where the Cubs are losing five to nothing. Restaurant tour George Photo, who is Greek. His name is really Fotopoulos. And here's my chance. He's here with the Continental Baking Group. Wait a minute. Why do all Greeks' names end in S? Well, if their last name is with a Papist, that means because somebody in the family was a priest, because Papist means priest. What if it isn't Papist? Well, then it's Poulos, and that's like Smith is in English. Or Dabonski is in Polish. Well, what if it isn't uh, Poulos? Then he's really not a Greek. If he's not a Poulos or a Pampas, he's not a Greek. <laughs> Unless he's a Clattis. <laughs> I was with Nick last night, by the way. Nick Clattis, former basketball star at Loyola years ago. <laughs> well, you ask a silly question, you get a crazy answer, right? Here's Moreland. We need some runs. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Scott Holman, a rookie starting for the Mets, and his teammates have given him a five to nothing lead. One thing about it, Neil Allen, their star relief man, is not with the club. Maybe we can still get to this guy. Curve all of it inside. The ball on the strike. Five to zip. Randy Martz was knocked out in the second round. Curve low outside. Two balls and a strike. A slim crowd on hand. Not bad in the bleachers, but you can almost count them in the grandstand. Whoa, he really chased a bad ball. Moreland with a count even up now. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the second inning. Grilled foul into the right field corner. Two and two. Let's see, Arnie Harris's name ends in S. He's not Greek, is he? <laughs> There's a ground ball to the shortstop. Garden hire. There's a peg in time. Four in a row retired by Scott Holman. He may go right in the Baseball's Hall of Fame, right from Wrigley Field here today. The only way Arnie can be Greek is if they drain the Mediterranean. <laughs> <laughs> One man out, nobody on. Ball game in the second inning. Don't mention Gallios' name. He never comes to a Cubs game. But Jim Janik, you can mention. Nick Clavis, you can mention. There's a pitch outside. Two balls, no strikes. <laughs> Galios has season tickets, but I haven't seen him here all year. Jay Johnstone. With a count, two balls and a strike. 
One man out. Holman has retired four in a row. All very easily, too, on ground out. Has a good sinker going. Pat Tabler on deck. Two balls and a strike. Ground ball headed for right field. Base hit. John Stone singles the right. Well, that proves it can be hit. Now time to get some runs. Here's Tabler. He hit one homer this year since he joined the Cubs. He hit a flock of them in Iowa. One out, one on. Now Holman's pitch. Fastball in there at the knees. Strike call. Mets got two in the first, three in the second. Bright sunshine, a beautiful afternoon. A little bit cool, but other than that, perfect. A little bit inside. This is a World Series type of day. Cool and crystal clear. A ball and a strike. Ground ball might be a double play. They don't need a double play. It could have been a double play if they needed it. Now, let's see now what's happening here. They need it yeah. because there's only one out. They forgot how many were out. I, th I thought maybe I had made the mistake. They had a double play. Now, let's see. Both men are going to be safe, aren't they? No, uh, John Stone was forced. John Stone walks off third base now. Watch Tabler. They forget that there's only one out. Hubie Brooks throws down to Giles. Now look at Giles. Flips the ball. The umpire knew how many were out, but the players didn't. What's going on here today? Was there a full moon last night? Here's uh, Kennedy now. A little tap foul. So Tabler is safe on a fieldish choice. As John Stone was forced... He'll be Brooks to Giles. Kennedy hitting 219. Two homers, 24 runs batted in. Here's the pitch. <laughs> George Bamberger, when I get into the dugout, will say, now, fellas, here's the way it goes. One, two, then there's two, and then comes three. <laughs> And it's a pitch low and outside. Two balls and a strike. I didn't think that football strike could affect the baseball players, too. Now the pitch. Inside and high. Ball three. Butch Benton, the catcher, will be next. Randy Stein limbering up for the Cubs. Lead, yeah, wants a pitcher ready in the event this inning is prolonged to the point where he might use a pinch hitter for Proley. Line, nice play by Gordon Harden. Then he can't find the ball. Everybody is safe. Watch his play now. Garden hire all this year making plays that it stands you on your ear. Now here's one that all he has to do is get and make a little flip. <laughs> now where is it? Where is it? Where's the merry-go-round? <laughs> There's Rube Benton now. He made himself into a corkscrew here. <laughs> all right, Butch, get on your old teammates here and get us back in this thing. Ben Benton's been to bat three times looking for his first hit as a member of the Cubs. Right-hand batter swings, there's a base hit! In the left center, a run will score. Another man racing to third. Benton against his old teammates drilled the first pitch like a bullet into the left center. Now the Cubs trail only by four. All right, they just opened a little gate for you and Benton didn't wait. He jumped on 
Holman, first pitch, and gets Tabler home. So the error did in fact hurt. The fact they forgot the double play hurt. The old story, you make mistakes. That's the way the other team wins baseball games, and the Mets are trying to let us back in, and Scotty Thompson will be the pinch hitter. Thompson coming out, left-handed batter. The score now five to one. The Cubs trail only by four. With the runner at first and another one at third. We have had two hits and an error in this inning. Have a chance to retire the side on a double play, but Giles, the second baseman, mistakenly thought there were two out when there was really only one and flipped the ball thinking the inning was over. Now Scott Thompson coming out. Runners first and third. He is batting for Proley. The pitch into the almost into the dirt. Fastball low. Bruce Bochy. The Mets are very high on this fella. 27-year-old receiver, used to be with Houston. One ball, no strikes. Inside, ball two. Two balls, no strike. Scott Thompson looking down at Gordy McKenzie. Thompson hitting 302 with no homers, two RBI. The delivery. Woo, he had a good rip. Boy, he was going to, to the downs on that. <laughs> and where, he was out in front where he would have pulled the ball had he hit it. Yeah, and the where but they've got that right fielder Jorgensen playing today. You might have gotten a couple of runs in. They play Scott Thompson to hit to the opposite field where he regularly does. There's Benton at first. Kennedy's a third. High hopper. He's got a chance. No, the pitcher nice play throws him out. The pitcher doesn't make it. He beats yep. it out. That ball gets over his head and bounces one more time. But those are ifs. And it's only one run, two hits, one air, two left. At the end of two, the Mets five, the Cubs one. Carry and Milo Hamilton. Watch uh, the first base coach, Buddy Harrelson. Per perfect pantomime here as Bill Buckner tosses the infield ball around. Now watch this timing by Harrelson. <laughs> Buck tried to pull him there. Randy Stein is the new pitcher. We go to the top of the third. Mike Jorgensen, the single his first trip. It's a high fly ball, short center, Hall is there. Makes the catch. Tell you, Hall plays that center field with a with an assurance and a poise that belies his youth. As I mentioned, Randy Stein becomes a third cup pitcher. Bill Freak just attended George Allen's press conference. And he'll have a report on that uh, on the 9 o'clock news tonight. George Allen is sorry. What would he <laughs> the strike? The Bemu League isn't ready to play right now. That would be great timing, wouldn't it? Two strikes and nothing on Hubie Brooks. One out. Third inning. Five to one Mets. Pitch a little bit low. Hubie Brooks hitting 257. Couple of thousand on hand here. Same two teams tomorrow. And then a week on the road. 
and the final two games of the season. Saturday, October the 2nd, Sunday, October the 3rd. Here at Rigby Field against the St. Louis Cardinals. Ball low. Three balls, two strikes after being way ahead of him, 0 and 2. He's down now to the pitch of decision. Ball four, he walks it. Every one of our pitchers is a lot of base runners. Here's Bruce Bochy, B O C H Y. Where I come from, they would they would call it Bucci, Bucci ball. But spell it differently, B O C C I. This guy's from France, B O C H Y. He actually was born in France. Lande de Bousset, France. <laughs> Here's a good swing on, a little tap. Sandor flips, one out. First base double play. Beautiful. Boy, that Bucci, Bucci hit the ball on the ground. The ball was hit so softly, I didn't think they could get a double play. But Sandberg and uh, Kennedy did. Well, we got a break in the fact that uh, Bochi was running, too. But look at uh, Rhino just flipped that ball. Kennedy says, hey, we got a shot. Take it. And there's no runner in the picture. <laughs> Cubs get their 104th double play. A nice backhander flip by Sandberg with a passing of every day. It shows you that he can play anywhere and play it well. We go to the bottom of the third. It's a Mets five. The Cubs won. Zenus portable video package for $1,499. You get camera, tuner, timer, recorder, and wireless remote control. Why don't you see your Zenith dealer? Hey, Bill Frank, what did uh, anything in particular George Allen say? I know you're going to have a full report at 9 o'clock. Well, he was pretty funny because, like you said, he was very anxious to have his blitz football team on the field, but we asked him about it, and he said, well, we don't even have a chin strap yet. We can't yeah. go out there. <laughs> well, we look forward to hearing that at, on the 9 o'clock news tonight. Well, he's always good. As you know, George Allen comes up with good quotes, and he's, he's for the players. Same George Allen. Well, I'm telling you, when you read about all this money being kicked around, you, you got to believe that the... The players deserve some consideration. He says they're underpaid. He said all the players are underpaid. All the players? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the stars. A ball and a strike. Here's Ryan Sandberg trying to get something going. The Cubs trail by four. But a long way to go. Scott Holman, a rookie right-hander on the hill for the Mets. Bottom of the third. Sandberg rolled out his first time. Here's the pitch. Look out, inside, ball three. We have the top of the batting order, Sandberg, Hall, and Buckner coming up here in the third. Sandberg hitting 268. Holman hasn't walked anybody yet. The pitch, he has now, ball four. There's Mal Hall. No homers, three runs batted in. The kid swung at the first pitch and grounded out in the first inning. Let's get some people on for Bill Buckner. He's tired of sitting on 99. Here's the stretch the pitch. Low one outside. <laughs> Hall is so anxious, he had to do a double take to keep him swinging at that one. When he argued on that pitch yesterday, the thought was outside, and our replay showed that it was. He says, that's the pitch I'm trying to lay off of, and they want me to swing at it so I don't get called out. He says, that was way outside. There's a base hit like a bullet. Here comes Sandberg around second. He'll make it easily. He really ripped that one. A line drive to right, and the Cubs suddenly have life. Runners at first and third, nobody out. 
Look at him go after this. Right down the middle, and he jerked it right over the second baseman's head. Sandberg running, of course, will make it to third easily. So now you've got some people on for Buckner. A fly ball can get him that 100th RBI, but we want more than that. The Cubs trailing only by four. We're in the bottom of the third. There you see the stats on Buckner. Hitting 309. Not even in the minor leagues did he ever drive in 100 runs. Ah, uh, the pitch. Here it is. Fastball outside. Ball one. Scott Holman. Trying to put a little extra on that fastball that time. One ball, no strikes. They play Buckner straight away in deep. One ball, no strikes. The pitch. Swung and he missed. He took something off. And Buckner was way out in front. With his trouble, they've got Zachary throwing in their bullpen. You're watching Cubs baseball through WGN Channel 9 Chicago. Runners first and third infield back. It's really the first chance Buckner has had, first good chance to drive in a run in a little while. The pitch. Oh, he chased. The pitch may have been bad, but he's a good low ball hitter. And he fouled it off. Two strikes and a ball. Infield playing back. Now ready. Two strikes and a ball. Bill Buckner digging in. He's a key man on this inning with nobody out. The pitch. Swings and a pitch over his head and he fouls it off. You know, it could be the newness of home and the experienced hitters like Buckner. When they don't know a pitcher, they're not as good as when they can anticipate their pattern of pitching against them. You could tell his reaction on that pitch right there. He wasn't looking for that ball at all. Two strikes and a ball. Now the pitch. Time call. As Holman took too long, Buckner stepped out of the batter's box. Moreland on deck. See if he comes off that high heater with a curveball. He threw him a, two good curveballs earlier. The delivery now. Bouncing ball might be a double play. It is. And the run scores. He will not get credit for that run batted in. You don't get credit when you roll into a double play. So he still has a 100th to get. It's now a five to two ball game. And Gordon Iyer just stepped on the bag and threw over to first base as Sandberg scored. That's Sandberg's 95th run scored this year. Here's Moreland and the pitch a little bit inside. One ball, no strikes. Well, if he could get 100, that'd be impressive, especially since he batted down in the order most of the first half. And especially since he started so poorly, one out of his first 38. And 0 for his first 20. He came a long way. The pitch to Moreland swung on and foul back and out of play. Two balls and a strike, a run is in. The Cubs now trail by three. Winning this ball game is going to depend on whether our pitchers can hold them. You have the feeling you're going to keep pecking away for some runs. Ah, the pitch. High ball three. Jay Johnstone on deck. Keith Moreland hitting 455 for the year against the Mets with two homers and nine RBI. Ball, he walked it. There's Johnstone. He singled his first time up. Lance Perry 
Parrish, this fine catcher of the Detroit Tigers, hit his 30th home run last night. There's a pitch in there for a strike call. Only three catchers in baseball history have ever hit 30 or more homers. Yogi Berra, Gus Triandos, and now Lance Parrish. There's a pitch outside, evens it up, a ball and a strike. Jack Rosenberg, our sports editor, doing a little research on that. A ball and a strike. Outside, ball two. Pat Tabler waiting on deck. There have been four men to bat this inning. Three of them have reached base. But there are two out. High pop foul. Going to stay in play. The catcher under the ball. No, he can't make it. It's in the stand. Wind blew it away from him. <laughs> you can see Bo Bochi now looking up at the sky. Two and two is the count. That ball ordinarily would have been an easy foul ball to the catcher. But the wind blew it into about the second row. Two balls, two strikes. Jay Johnstone. Only three catchers in the American League's history have hit over 30 home runs. Struck him out. He took something off on his curveball. And Johnstone went down swinging. One run. One hit, no errors, and one left. Lou Boudreau will be joining Milo here in a moment. This is Harry Carey from Wrigley Field, where at the end of three, it's the Mets five, the Cubs two. George, I'm surprised at you. Your father used to talk to me for hours about you being directly descended from the Ashanti tribe. At one time, they were the biggest African nation. Isn't that interesting, George? Maybe you've got some pygmy in you, too. You come from kings. They were kings. John. Yes. And I... Let's talk a little baseball. We're going to the fourth inning as Stein works here to Giles, who hit a home run the first time up. Breaks out in strange places. <laughs> yes, it does. But we got a count on the bullpen now, Lou. Well, once again, we, we've been counting on that bullpen for the last six weeks, and they've been doing a great job. They really have. Randy Martz, who had pitched so well in Montreal, just couldn't get the ball down today. No, he was up high and uh, with his fastball. All right, Giles, this time goes from the sublime to the ridiculous, from a home run to a strikeout swinging. First registered by Stein. It is the second against the Mets today. Now, I'm not going to make any excuses, good kid, but Benton now has looked better working with Stein than he had with Martz because he's been working with Stein all year. Right, down at Des Moines. In Des Moines. You've so, got a good point. So there might be a little... Uh, difference in, in calls and March didn't want to ch shake him off continually. Gave him the target a little differently. That's All kinds right. of things That's could be right. a possibility. So Holman who bounced the short the first time is up here and is now looking at a 1-1 count. We're in the fourth inning. The Mets jumped in front early. They're leading 5-2. to two. There's time and we've been coming back in these kind of games. Yes we have. We can hold them to five runs. I think we can score five or more off of Holman and the Met bullpen. They had a mental lapse or two. Gave us a little break. Bouncer right side. Oh. Sandberg. Oh, I tell you. He can play a tough hop very nicely. He is as smooth as glass, that yes. kid. Yes, he is. Tremendous. Up to the top we go with Mookie Wilson. He has struck out swinging, doubled, and scored their fourth run. It's safely in 11 of his last 14 games. So the New York Mets, who some thought in spring training, and when we saw them the first time, that maybe they were going to be a better club, but they ran into a little tailspin, too. They lost a lot of games in a row, 15, I think it was. Those, it's hard to recover from. Big high bounce. Look at that Sandberg charge. 
fastball. He just he knows when to charge. He knows when to stay back, as he did on the pitcher, slow runner. But with Wilson at that, he charged the ball and played it beautifully. Yes, sir. Sandberg, two good plays in the inning. Three up, three down for Stein. We played into the middle of the fourth. The Mets still have their three-run lead. Six thousand of these bouncy little nylon balls will be given to you fans age 14 and under compliments of seven up. Bottom of the fourth, Tabler, Kennedy, Benton. Well, that Benton didn't wait long to jar an old teammate, did he? Oh, he did. <laughs> Jumped on the first pitch. Picked that low ball up and laid it in the left center. now has pitched a lot of baseballs. He's thrown a lot of pitches. He's not noted for control. He did not have good control with Tidewater. Boy, you remember when they brought him up at the end of 80, they thought he was the next answer. Boy, he had good stuff and hurt his shoulder. Mm -hmm. So you just never know, brother. You got to count the blessings when they're oh, there. Oh, how true that is in all sports and in all professions, I guess. More chances of injuries, of course, in the in sporting on games. The field. Yeah. Tabler was safe on a fielder's choice in the second. When they went to sleep, thought they had a double play. Turned out giving us a run. Mm -hmm. made, also made an error later. We'll thank him for that gift. You said it. Get out in front here and say, hey, you let us in. Tidrow throwing in the bullpen because the pitcher is due up fourth in the inning. One ball, one strike to Tabler. He leads off in the fourth inning. And Holman misses away. Two balls and a strike. Giles homered for them. They picked up two in the first, three in the second. Cubs got a run in the second and another one in the third. That's the way it's happened here so far. With Lou Boudreau, I'm Milo Hamilton. Cubs baseball with the Mets from Wrigley Field. Crowds him, falls behind him, three and one. He's walked two. He struck out one. And Scott Holman. Working here for the New York Mets in the first of a two-game series. Tomorrow it'll be Lynch against Bird. 3-1 to Tablet. Bullseye, 3-2. We'll be on tomorrow at 1.15, and Gordon Goldsberry, the head of scouting in our minor league operation, will be our guest. He's been out in the instructional. He'll be back tonight, and Gordy will join us tomorrow on the leadoff at 1.15. A lot of those good youngsters that we want to hear about. One left-hand pitcher from Harvey, I think we're going to talk about. <laughs> High Oops. pop on the right side. Kingman over. Stayed with it. Today you have to, the way that wind is moving yes. around. The wind carried the other pop up out of the uh, catcher's reach earlier. But Good. two big pitches in this ball game, in my opinion, Milo, was Buckner going after a bad pitch, which was high, and then the, the double play ball that he hit into in the third inning with runners on first and third and nobody out. Yeah, that was the difference in getting one or maybe getting two or three. Maybe getting two or three is correct. 0-1 oh to Junior. He reached on an error on the shortstop. Garden higher in the second inning. I Benton drove he, in a run. The other run scored on a double play ball. I thought he could have been given a base hit on that ball. Yeah, it handcuffed Garden higher a little. Now here's Kingman again. Uh-oh, this one blew by him a little bit just over the railing. Blew it away just as the one did from their catcher a while back. Kingman did not go to the railing and move. He was moving with the ball, keeping his eye on the ball, but the wind carried it and right into the first row in the dugout. He had to reach for it. But had he been over there, I think he'd have made the catch. All right, so Junior's going to get a swing on the house. 0-2 from Scott Holman. Curveball. Bounced foul outside third. 
So still no ball, two strikes. Tidrow continues to throw in the pen down the right side. So we'll be on TV tomorrow, all three from St. Louis over the weekend. Two in Philly, two in New York, home for the final weekend, including Fan Appreciation Day, Saturday, a week from this Saturday the second. One ball, two strikes. Where has it gone? It's closing in on us, isn't it? Just now, and now you even notice it more, playing well. Say, hey, let's start over. Yeah, this is right. Crowds him again, two and two. Think he ought to be looking for the curve here? He's really <laughs> moved him back twice. Yes, he has with two good fastballs, and uh, he's not afraid to throw the curveball, two and two, well behind the hitter. Throwing more curveballs than before he hurt his shoulder. That's odd, isn't it? There it is. Two balls and two strikes. Nobody on, one away. The Cubs have been out hit seven to three, outscored five to two. Starter Randy Martz had a little rocky beginning. And Leelia just couldn't wait. Here's the two two. And it's full to Junior. Well, we had Tony Garofalo, the Cubs trainer, on today, and I see Jake Zucker, the team doctor arrived a while ago he's got to come out and make sure that all those things he said were <laughs> valid. all right on target three two high bounce over the mound shortstop got to come on he'll grab and throw garden hire he timed that perfectly he knew he had the high bounce coming to him so he just stayed back and then all of a sudden increased his speed not only in feeling the ball but getting something on the throw to kingman well, a young lady who bills herself as the number one Cubs and Bill Buckner fan celebrating a birthday out here today. 14th birthday to Cindy Gradeck. Benton with a bouncer. Look at that pitcher, the second good play he's made. Yes, indeed. He made an excellent play earlier in this game on Scotty Thompson. So, Holman showing you that he can feel that pitching position. Three up and three down. Takes care of Butch Benton. We played through four as you look at that fine play again. And after four innings at Wrigley Field in the first game of a two-game series, Mets five, Cubs two. Our game is moving to the fifth, and Gardenhire, who has doubled, singled, driven in a run, and scored twice. He's been busy. Almost looked like he was thinking about Button there. He was. He wanted to take the pitch to see what uh, kind of a fastball that Stein has been throwing. <laughs> Won't you be my cubby bear? <laughs> <laughs> that makes it a strike one to go with two balls as Gardenhire leads it off here in the fifth inning, batting in the two spot. He'll be followed by Foster and then Kingman. Now he is going to bunt it. Tabler just had one shot at hoping to scoop and throw because Gardenhire runs pretty well. Either you do or you don't. And he's improved. Gardenhire has improved as a hitter. That uh, is his third hit of the day. He drops this ball down the third base line and sort of had a spin on it. And uh, Tabler just couldn't make any contact. So they've got eight hits, and Mr. Gardenhire has three of them, as Lou just told you. Now here's Foster had an excuse me swing and got a base hit in an RBI in the second inning. He greeted Proley with it. That's a tough way for that guy to have to come out of the bullpen and get that kind of a hit. Yeah, that's right. And a strike to Big George. Kingman will be next. Lead off single for Gardenhire. Inning number five. March started. Proley in the second. Stein in the third. We're now in the fifth. Evens the count of the ball and a strike. Philadelphia at Montreal tonight. Pittsburgh at St. Louis. There goes the runner. Throw down by Benton will never be in time. It'll be a stolen base for Gardenhire. It was a breaking pitch. They're very difficult to make the catch and throw to second base on one step. Watch Benton. He takes two steps after catching this curveball and then fires, but on the first base side. And consequently, Gardenhire has a stolen base. Five out of nine, as they showed you, and now Foster sends a fly ball to right field. Johnstone coming in, 
came in good shape because he wanted that momentum after the catch to keep that guy from going yes, to third. Definitely. And Johnstone had a little trouble earlier <laughs> tipping his cap out there to the bleacher <laughs> fans. The old Jaybird had some trouble early. But yes, he did. He'll fight you back. <laughs> he won't be shy in, in the attempt. No, nope. then the next inning came right up there to bat in the second inning, drilled a single. Didn't let it carry over for no, him. No, he did. Garden higher, second base. Kingman the batter. Kingman drove in a run with a base hit in the first. And you saw Kingman in that time at bat. He really was going for the downs on the pitch before, and then after the 3-2 count reached him, just took the nice swing, got the base hit. He just wanted to make contact, as strong as he is. And for hitting only about 210 or 211. He got a stack of ribbies, hasn't he? He's got a 37 home runs and 97 RBIs, which is bad. See, see, with that count, he's just trying to put a lid on that home run title. But if, you, if the count gets up to a place where maybe he can drive in the run without taking the big swing, then he'll do that, too. No balls, two strikes. Kingman going to step out a while on Randy Stein. Play here again tomorrow. Doug Bird going against Lynch. Smashed on the ground right to third. Tabler looks him back. Fires on the buck. And Kingman is out to make it two away. Good sinker by Stein that time. He picks Kingman beautifully. Kept that ball low and inside to him. Mike Jorgensen had a base hit in the first. Third inning, he flied to center. So a fellow who can play the outfield spots or first base, Mike Jorgensen. And a bat here now with Garden Hire at second. Garden Hire led off the inning with a hit. Stole second, but he's there now with two away. To put him on, they'd rather pitch to Hubie Brooks here. Well, if you recall, Brooks looked terrible on the first two curveballs thrown to him by Stein last time at bat. And then Stein was just outside of the strike zone too far for Brooks to chase the pitches, and he walked him. So the intentional pass completed. They've got two on with two away, and it brings up Hubie Brooks, who lined a second in the first. Third inning, got a base on balls. Then uh, Bochy obliged by wrapping into a double play right after the walk. Two on, two out. You don't want to let them get an easy one here, Lou. Nope. Big uh, group from the Time Life Building. Eleanor Coughlin, who is an old friend, out with her boss, Arthur D. Chandler, Jr., fouled it off, one and one. Art is the Midwestern Advertising Sales Manager for Time Life. Took the day, brought the staff out, and said, let's go out and watch the Cubbies play. Not a bad idea. No, sir. Good idea. A ball and a strike. U.B. Brooks hitting 257. He's a better hitter than that, isn't he, Lou? Yes. Yes, he is. Two on, two out. Jammed him, popped him down the right side. Now, is the wind going to blow it away from Buckner? I think it will. Yeah, it get, ends up clear back in the aisle. One ball and two strikes. Now, let's see if Stein goes to that sidearm curveball breaking away from Brooks. See if we can strike him out. He got that big, good size for boy. A side arm or a crossfire could be a good motion for him. <laughs> there it was. <laughs> and Brooks just luckily fouled it off. Another souvenir at Wrigley Field. Remember tomorrow, Rag Day Ball for you folks. That was a popular promotion earlier this year. You get another shot at it tomorrow. One ball, two strikes. Oh, boy. Now it's two and two. Guys on our engineering crew have a friend, Gary Hackstetter, out of Memorial Hospital in DuPage County. They're hoping he's feeling better today as he watches the game. Now he goes behind him three and two. Last time he lost him. He's gone full here. Bochi would be next. Three and two, the runners will be going with two down. There they go, here it comes. And he walked him and the bases are loaded with Mets. 
He struggled with him again. Yeah, Elia wasn't counting on that. Third walk to the Mets, and Stein has given them all since he came on in the third inning. Bochy has popped to second, and he's grounded into a double play. Now, if you can get him to hit the ball on the ground, you've got to shout at him about anywhere because he doesn't run well, and he showed evidence of that on the double play ball. Tidrow going to work in the bullpen for the Cubs, and a strike to Bruce Bochy. Now, when you've fallen behind early, and here you are in the middle of the game, and your bullpen has done the job, it needs to do it here because you can't let them stretch out that lead again on you. Started after it, asked for an appeal, first base umpire. Davison says, no, he didn't, and the count is even at a ball and a strike. Garden higher third, Jorgensen second, Brooks first. No place to put Bochy with two away, 1-1. One, one. Fouled it back. Now let's see if you can measure him and get out of this mess. Has to get out of this mess. Eight, one, seven. one ball, two strikes, two away. As you look at those bases, they're loaded. Two and two. Wouldn't chase the sinker. Two balls and two strikes. Two down. We're playing the Mets in the first game of a two-game series. We'll wrap up the homestand tomorrow. And the 2-2. A bouncer. Shortstop Kennedy fired a rhino. Force him. They forced Brooks, and he got out of it. That's where that guy with that sinker and slider can help you out of the yes, pen. Indeed. He made him go after a pitch that was low, and he grounds out. 6-4 force. No runs. One hit. No errors, a couple of walks, one intentional. The Mets leave three. We played halfway through this one. After four and a half at Wrigley, Mets five runs, eight hits. Cubs two runs, three hits. As we go to the bottom of the fifth, we'll have a pinch hitter, Steve Henderson, who you may recall the last time we played these Mets at New York in that long weekend, including a Sunday doubleheader. He had a big series, and he's going to be a pinch hitter to start it off. Yes. He started to uh, make contact, getting some base hits. There's Leon. Says he's okay. One more day. <laughs> All right, Bull, we're counting on you. Because we need his bat to make up, because we might not have Jody Davis for two or three days yeah, for that bad right. shoulder. And as you're watching the Cubs and the Mets from Wrigley Field, I'm Milo Hamilton along with Lou Boudreaux. It's coming to you on WGN, Television 9 in Chicago, America's number one sports station. Where you get the only Chicago primetime news hour, the 9 o'clock news, with news anchors such as Mr. Anchor in Chicago, John Drury. And the Birmingham Connection, Denise Cannon. Tonight at 9, Bill Frank will have the sports. Tom Skilling, the weather. One of the features Bill Frank will have, other than highlights of this game, an interview with George Allen of the Blitz. So here is Henderson batting for Stein, who had three scoreless innings, so he did the job he had to do. Yes, once again, Crowley uh, gave up the hit that scored a run on that check swing by Foster, but he did a good job. Henderson goes after the first pitch, sends a fly ball to right center. They're shielding their eyes out there, and it turns out that it blows it a little over where Jorgensen will make it. As it started out, it looked like Wilson would, but that wind blowing over toward the right field line, everybody's got to be ready. This is right. I don't think uh, Wilson saw the ball, and good thing that Jorgensen came over to make the play. Sandberg 0 for 1. He walked in the third. It blossomed into our second run. The Mets are leading 5 to 2 as the Cubs bat in the fifth against Scott Holman. Got the top of the order here now. Moves him back. Ball one, no strikes to Rhino. Somebody wrote me a letter the other day and says, you talk about him and makes the club sound like a zoo. Who ever heard of Rhino? <laughs> well, if you get on the bus with us or on the plane or be in the clubhouse or down around that's the batting cage, that's all they call him. That's all they call him. That's not a, you know, up in the booth, we rarely pass out nicknames. It's things we hear that become, cons you don't do it after you've heard it once or twice. When every player and all the coaches call him Rhino, after a while you figure, well, that must be his nickname. Well, just like they call Durham Bull. That's right. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. They call Lou Boudreau good kid. <laughs> yeah. For about a half a century That's or so. Ball. Started when he was three. <laughs> right back to the mound. Nothing tough about that. No, Ryan had the good idea, but couldn't get it past Holman to the second baseman. Giles. 
Here comes Hall, had a base hit in the third inning. You know, as soon we finish baseball on the 3rd of October, then on the 3rd of November we start basketball. WGN will bring you the best in slam dunk NBA basketball. Reggie Theus will lead the fast-breaking Bulls against other superstars here on Channel 9. We'll start it off on the 3rd of November with the Bulls at Detroit against the Pistons and Isaiah Thomas. Be the beginning of quite a basketball schedule. We'll have 69 basketball games for you on Channel 9 this winter. That means the Bulls, DePaul, Loyola, some late-season Illinois games, Big Ten games, Notre Dame. He's in a hole 0 and 2. He tried to turn the wind around with that one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> down in their bullpen, a little sunshine. Yeah, they don't the wanna, they're not going to sit in the bullpen. It's in the shadows of the, the middle, upper deck. Zachary, I believe. He'd warmed up earlier. I hope he warms up again. He's gone. Well, I tell you, Scott Holman. He threw three different pitches to Hall that time. So it's three up and three down. He's retired seven in a row now. And we have played through five. Mets still leading. New York five, Cubs two. In the sixth inning, our new pitcher is Dick Tidrow. For Tidrow, he's 1-8, lost three. 3.51 3 earn run average. This is his 62nd game. He has pitched 97 and one-third innings, allowed 102 hits, 44 runs, 38 of them earned. He's allowed six home runs to be hit off of his servings. And he has walked 27 men while striking out 58. Against the Mets, Tidrow will be making his fifth appearance of the year. No wins and no losses, one save. He saved one for Proley in that weekend that we talked about earlier when Proley won three games in a five-game series. In Ted Rose, four outings, seven in the third innings, nine hits, seven runs, only three of them earned. He had some errors behind him, as you can tell. Three walks, one strikeout. Out of the four previous, three of the four were effective. So here he is now to take a look at Brian Giles, who was homered and struck out. And uh, Giles will never forget the weekend he got called up because it was in that five-game series I referred to a moment ago. And remember the first game of that doubleheader, he made plays that we hadn't seen second yes. baseman that had been up all year <laughs> That's make. That's true. Cost us a game. He was really excited. All right, that's more like it. Take care of him in a hurry. <laughs> he hurt us with a long ball earlier. Kidro has done an exceptionally fine job now the last six or eight appearances that he's made in relief. So he takes care of Giles. Now he'll look at Holman. Holman's 0 for 2 today. Bounced out twice. Dick Tidrow in his last 36 in the third innings, that's 24 appearances, has a very fine ERA of 223. Yeah, that's right. Boy, you snipped that out right, good kid. <laughs> Just let us have a little time. We'll tell him a few things. 1-1. One, one. Well, yep. he's, he's been put in the spot from the 6th inning, 7th inning to 8th inning, holding the oppositions in without scoring so we can get close to either tie or go out in front for Lee Smith. Well, what about that Campbell yesterday? Did he, he was bring it from the old intestinal fortitude? He was Woo. tremendous. One and two. Hard shot. Kennedy knocks it down. Can he recover? Deadened oh. in time. That ball was really hit. Bowman runs very well. Oh, he scooted down that line. Yes, Here he it did. He's, the ball was hit very sharply as it was inside to the pitcher, and he hit it one hopper right off of the glove. It really handcuffed Kennedy, picked it up, took a couple of steps to fire the ball, but Holman beat it out. Yes, base hit. The ball was hit very well. And as you said earlier, I think a ball hit the garden higher, didn't you think? I thought it should have been a hit for, for Kennedy. Kennedy. Yes. yes. All right. Here's your top man in the order, Mookie Wilson, one for three. I don't like to see any shortstop make errors. Well, it hurts. They seldom do, do they? They, they seldom do. They're all bad hops. <laughs> 
A runner on with one out. We're in the sixth inning. New York scored early. They lead five to two. We'll see them here again tomorrow. Next Wednesday and Thursday at Shea. And we'll come home for the Cardinals. High fly ball, left center. Wind will just keep it right up there as long as Moreland needs to adjust. And it is two away. Mookie gave that ball a pretty good stroke. The wind is, is carrying in, and it's a cold wind coming in from center field today. Yes, this fall as a little conference goes on with Benton and Tidro. Exciting college basketball with DePaul, Blue Demons, Irish of Notre Dame, Loyola. Big Ten action. All here on Channel 9. Arnie Harris and I, after baseball, will let the old suitcases air out a little and then start all over again. See some great action this year for those basketball teams. Yep. Channel 9 will be the spot for you. Gardenhire has three straight hits. Double, single, another single. Driven in a run, scored twice and stolen a base. He's made the most of this ball game yeah, for he's, himself. He's looked a lot different to me from the last time we saw him in New York insofar as confidence at the plate. Staying in on pitches that are inside and getting his cuts. Good swings. Bouncer short. Junior will handle this. Flip it to Sandberg. And it's all over in the sixth for the Mets. Six four on the force. No runs and one hit. No errors. And one left. Middle of the sixth. Mets still on top of our Cubs. Cubs need to go to work. They're trailing by three. Well, Scott Holman is still on. Let's see if maybe he's gone far enough, Lou. Yes, Yes, I think he's pitched uh, enough out there. Let's get somebody else in there. Let Buckner start it off with a base hit. Then we've got Moreland, Johnstone, Tabler, and Kennedy in this inning. All right. Scott Holman finished the warm-up tosses. Buckner, who got a run across on a double play ball in the third, will be leading it off. Billy Buck is 0 for 2. Well, nice to see Gary Lowmiller, the highly respected chief financial officer of WGN Continental Broadcasting Company, out here today with a group. Andy McKenna, head man of our club, just walked by. Finishing up his first full year. And an interesting one for him, too. Yep. Some valleys, peaks and valleys in there, but it looks like it's going to end on an upswing. Since the All-Star break in the 1st of August, the club has played better more often than the other way, and that's a good sign. Yes, indeed. Because at that time of the year, the other clubs are club, at their best, aren't they're they? They're at their best. You're right. Because they're the ones that are on a drive. And the Phillies and the Montreal Expos and the Pittsburgh Pirates, when they sit down this year, they'll say, let's see, we're going pretty good there. And uh, who was it we played? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, those Cubs. A ball and a strike. Good curve. Boy, he's got a good one, Yes, too. he has. He'll throw it at any time, too. He has better control of his curveball, in my opinion, than his fastball. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a little odd when you come off of a shoulder injury that you come back with the good breaking ball, isn't it? Yeah, well, mentally, you're a little frightened of throwing too many curveballs. Fouled off by Buckner. Count still one and two. One ball, two strikes as Bochi gives the sign for him. Holman ready. Two and two. We have to get Buckner hot again. Seems to pick up the ball club when his bat starts ringing base hits off of it. That's why that double play ball that uh, Holman got him to bounce into in the third was such a big play yes, at that indeed. time. That's right. Two balls, two strikes. Tried to do a little something fancy with a curveball that time and just didn't have the good control. Baseball's longest current winning streak, six games, belongs to our Cubbies. In jeopardy here, but Buckner could trigger something and get it going.
Oh, I'm glad he fouled that off. That was quite a pitch. And this it was. Low, outside, corner, in the strike zone. Well, a meeting of the Chicago Baseball Cancer Charities will be held tonight with our president, Marv Samuel. Doesn't have trouble getting the crowd because he has it at Lou Malnati's. There's a high fly ball to left. Foster will just wait. It'll come right to him. Buckner is out, and it's one away. All right, Keith Moreland. Bounced to short in the second, walked in the third. Moreland will be followed by Johnstone. Well, the Cubs yesterday won with three hits, but today their three-hit production just hasn't enabled them to get back in it yet. Sixth inning, trailing five to two. That's only because the opposition has nine hits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pirates didn't have a lot of hits yesterday, but no. Cubs just made better use of theirs. Well, you hold that Pirates free swinging club to one run in 18 innings, chase them out of town, you've done your work. A ball and a strike to the Zonk. Keith Moreland had some of his best days this year against this club. Early he hit two homers and drove in 10 runs against them in the first two series. Off speed curve missing with it, two balls and a strike. Atlanta will be in Houston again tonight. Atlanta may wish they'd have never heard of Houston. <laughs> They've had some trouble with those oh, yes, they Astros. Now it's three and one. Make it good because we need base runners. Yes, we do. I was hoping that he would walk Buckner after Buckner fouled off that first three and two pitch. All right, three and one the count to Moreland. Moreland playing left field today. Scott Holman's gone all the way against four Cub pitchers. Now it's three and two. Well, the Pirates down in St. Louis. If anybody's going to head off at Redbird Express, somebody got to start now. There's only a week and a half left. They got hot at the right time. Three two. There's a drive way back into left, but the minute it left the bat. It was headed for foul territory. Had a real good cut. And he hit it well, but the wind carried it in foul territory. And the fact that he was out in front of it, looking for a fastball, got it and pulled it. We mentioned that Bill Frank was out, and he'll have the sports for you on the 9 o'clock news. A member of our staff, Tony Shootout today, taking a look at the big league scene. Here's the payoff, and a high bouncer going, well, didn't end up high. Giles went down to get it. But right at him, and it's two away. So second to first. Giles to Kingman takes care of Moreland. Now with two away, this fellow is rolling. Three, six, eight, nine in a row. Nobody has reached since he walked Moreland in the third inning. And he's pitched to several men with a count of three and two on the hitter, and he's been fortunate enough to get the ball over the, in the strike zone. Johnstone has one of the three hits. Got it in the second inning. Then he struck him out with a big off-speed curve the last time. With Brooks playing back, Jay figured, well, I'll take a shot at him here, but wasn't a good ball, and he let it go by. 1-0. and oh. As you would expect, the only afternoon action right here. Mets got two in the first, three in the second. Cubs answered with a run in the second, one in the third. Ball sinks for him a little, doesn't it? Yes, it does. He has two types of fastballs, one that rises and this one that he turns over just a little. But now you got to look for three pitches out of him then, don't you? Yes. Fouled up this way. And he threw all three to Hall last time that Hall faced him. Got him on all three pitches. Too. Got him looking, too. Yes. One ball, two strikes. Holman ready. High fly ball. Shallow right. Second baseman backed up maybe 10, 12 feet. And the pop-up takes care of it, and he's got a string of 10 going in the wrong direction for the Cubs. Well, let's hope we can get him next inning. Well, we've got to hold them again and then get to work in the seventh. Three up and three down. We have played through six. Mets five, Cubs two. You know, there's nothing like getting together for a nice, friendly game of cards. That's right. Jim brings the cards. Uh-oh. Mickey brings the doll. Thanks, doll. <laughs> and I bring the beer. Light beer from Miller. 
Light tastes great. It's got a third less calories than the regular beer. And it's less filling. And you don't want to get filled up when you're dealing with these guys who... Okay, Numa, cut the cards. Mm. Oh, no. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. <laughs> Cubby bears in this crowd today. <laughs> no. <laughs> we go on to the top of the seventh. Here's George Foster. He had a cut. WGM Sports sends good well wishes to a great Cubs fan. No moral in Westmont, Illinois Hospital. That evens a count on Foster at a ball and a strike. He batted in a run in the second with a base hit on a check swing. Dick Tidrow in relief. <clears throat> Bouncing ball foul. Boy, everything seems to be slow motion today. Foster hitting 246 for the year. Hey, struck him out. That's the 111th time that he has fanned this year. Kingman. Kingman has fanned 142 times. One out, nobody on. Kingman drove in a run with a base hit. He's one out of three. Fastball a little bit low. Time running out on the Cubs. They trail by three with three innings to go. Yeah, they put a shift on Kingman now. Sandberg, the second baseman, comes over to the shortstop side of the infield. 3,142 paid here today. Thirty-one forty-two paid, thirty-five twenty-two in the house. Two balls, no strikes on Kingman. Looking ahead of the seventh tabler, will be leading it off of the cub. He had a cut. Dave Kingman hitting two eleven. What out? Lance Parrish of the Tigers joined that select circle of American League catchers who have hit 30 or more homers. Here's a pitch fouled off. Parrish got his 30th for the Tigers last night. Only Yogi Berra and Dave and uh, Gus Triandis. Belong to that club in the American League. Two, two pitch. Hi, Pop Paul. <laughs> Out of play into the stand. They all race for the souvenir. They had so many empty seats. They race down the aisles. Hey, and they loose in baseball, and there is the lucky recipient. And he's a happy young man. Even gets a high five for that. <laughs> More excitement in the stands on that than it has been on the field. 2-2 two -two pitch. So the count is full on Dave Kingman. One out in the top of the seventh. Five to two in favor of the Mets. A 
again he had a cut. Boy, there's no doubt about what Kingman has in mind when he goes up there. Every swing is from Port Arthur. They're chanting in the stands as Marla Collins picks up a baseball. Collins, Collins. Here's the pitch. Again, he fouls it out of play. Full count. Three, two pitch. Ball, he walked him. Here's Mike Jorgensen. Jorgensen was intentionally passed in the fifth. Had a base hit in the first. There's a high pop foul. Benton under the ball. Makes the cut. So Jorgensen fouls to Butch Benton. And here's Hubie Brooks. They're here from Anderson, Indiana today. Roger Friesman watching in Las Vegas where it's 95 degrees today. Had to put that in, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Edith Cruz celebrating a birthday today. Two men are out. Yubi Brooks takes a low one inside. <laughs> one ball, no strikes. There's a pitch foul on a play. Arnie has it. He got a call from a guy in Texas. He says he he's out with the cattle all day long, and he's got a portable TV set. <laughs> Milo, he says, we soothe his cattle. <laughs> it's nice to be needed. 1-1 one, one pitch instead of throw over to first base. Two men are out. We're in the seventh. Well, that is a dead ball game. Come on, let's yell or something. We don't want to bother the cattle. <laughs> hey, swings and he misses. Two strikes and the ball. Frank Howard coaching at third base. Bud Harrelson at first base. Harrelson a good fielder. Howard a great hitter during their playing days. Hey, struck him out swinging. Kidrow breezes through. No runs. No hits. No air. One left. We go to the bottom of the seventh. The score. Mets five. Cubs two.
stars in Channel 9's movie special Thursday at 7. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. The Cubs are trailing by three. We're in the bottom of the seventh and Tabler is the batter. First pitch is in there for a strike call. Go for two today. The to Scott Holman has pitched a tremendous ball game. Here's a pitch in the dirt. He's allowed only three hits. He has set the Cubs down in order in each of the last three innings. Retiring nine men in a row. A ball and a strike. Whoop, he didn't mean to swing. A little tap back to the mound. Easy out. has not been that outstanding until today. One gone. There's Junior Kennedy. He was safe on an air in the second. The pitch. And it's a little bit inside. Holman had won 10 lost eight in the minor leagues this year at Tidewater. Got a 3.43 earn run average. He might as well be in the Hall of Fame the way he's looked today. There's a base hit like a bullet. Kennedy singles to center. Come on, let's get a few more like that. There's George Bamberger, the manager of the Mets. Jim Fry, his right-hand man, is just to his right. Here's Benton. He drove in a run in the second with a base hit. Benton had a fine year at Iowa. Her ball low. One ball, no strikes. We'll have a pinch hitter coming out for Tidrow. Activity in the bullpen. Campbell and Hernandez. There's a breaking ball high. Campbell, the right-hander, Hernandez, the left-hander. And they have a right-hander and a left-hander getting ready, too. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch. Strike at the knees. Butch Benton, only 25 years old. Starting professional baseball seven years ago. Two balls and a strike. Swung and he missed. He was going for the pump that time. And the count is evened up. Two balls, two strikes. Kennedy, the runner at first, one out. Double play ball, out at second, and safe at first. Junior Kennedy did his bit, and Brian Giles might be hurt. Giles may be cut. Kennedy trying to break up the double play. Let's see now, he is out at second base, which he's 
Giles limping around a little bit. I think he's going to be okay. Watch it. Here's a ground ball. Looks like a sure double play. Hit sharply right off the shortstop. Now look at Kennedy go into him. Took him out of the play, and Giles didn't get as much on the throw as, as he wanted to. Here's another angle. Now watch Kennedy spikes. Sliding right on in there. Giles tries to jump to hurdle over him. Here's Bob Wills coming out as a pinch hitter. Batting for Tidrow. Time running out on the Chicago Cubs who are trailing here in the seventh. Brian Giles, the second baseman, is okay. Bump Wills. He's been an outstanding pinch hitter. Wills will test the free agency market at the end of this year. Strike call, the fastball. Two out here in the bottom of the seventh. Five to two Mets. Same two teams will play here tomorrow afternoon. And the Cubs make their last road trip of this fast fading season. High ball one, the count evens up. A ball and a strike. Strike, a good breaking ball. Boy, that's been his bread and butter pitch, says Holman. He's had a good breaking ball going for him. Low on outside to even the count. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball, that'll end this inning. Giles over to first. Wills rolls out. And the Cubs have only two more chances left. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left at the end of seven. The Mets five, the Cubs two. Next on Charlie's Angels. Do I really look that much like the girl who was killed? It's spooky. The glamour world of modeling suddenly becomes a nightmare when a killer on a rampage stalks only the beautiful. We're from the Hilliard Agency. We'd like to see Mr. St. Clair about the fashion show this afternoon. The angels need more than good looks to capture a madman when they go undercover to put an end to high fashion murder. We go into the top of the eighth inning, Willie Hernandez. Becomes the fifth pitcher used by manager Lidia. Been used sparingly against the Mets three times and only picked up one full inning in three outings. Did a good job, though. No runs earned or otherwise. Hadn't walked anybody. Well, our bullpen has stopped him again. All the damage was done off the start of Randy Martz, all five runs. In an inning and two thirds, he gave up six hits and five runs. Crowley, Stein, and Tidrow have all held them since the second inning. And now it's Willie Hernandez, who has 10 saves and four victories this year with an earned run average of 3.13. <coughs> Bruce Bochy will lead it off here. The Cubs in the bottom of the eighth will have the top of their batting order. Maybe we can still get a rally going. Only three back. Bochy is nothing out of three today. Willie Hernandez getting set. Bochy batting 314. 
It's the only day game on the schedule. Everybody else plays tonight. Those who are scheduled. The delivery. Fastball in their butte. Strike off. One strike and nothing. There's a fastball a little bit inside. The count evens up. And a ball and a strike. There's a fastball a little high. Frank Howard of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Coaching at third base. Buddy Harrelson at first base. Boy, he can... <laughs> the size of him. <laughs> There's a base hit like a bullet. Bochi was waiting for a left-hander to come in, apparently. He really creamed that ball. So Hernandez is... Not with a solid single. As Brian Giles, he homered in the second. Not known as a home run hitter. And with the wind blowing in at 13 miles an hour, he must have surprised even himself. Here's a curveball a little bit outside. Ball one. Giles hitting 208. Now the pitch. Ground ball to Buckner. They might get a double play. Throws the second to one. Return to first. Safe. There'll be no error because he does not advance. The throw got away. Force out from Buckner to Kennedy. All right, let's take another look at that. The ball was down, and he hits it right on the ground to Buck. Doesn't hesitate at all. Now the throw back. A little on the right field side. So they don't get the double play. And boy, here is Holman. He has been surprisingly good here. And Holman had a base head in the sticks. One out of three. Willie Hernandez. The tempo of this ball game has been just very slow. Contrast to the thrilling ball game yesterday. And the day before. And the day before. <laughs> And since August the 1st. Here now is Holman, the pitch. He was going to bunt the fastball is outside, ball one. Three thousand one hundred and forty two paid here today. Well, over to first, the runner back. One man out. Holman got his the first hit of his major league career in the sixth inning when he singled. Now I hit of the pitcher, two balls, no strikes. The pitch. Swings and he fouled it back. That pitch was over his head. Look at Frank Howard going through <laughs> a series of signs. <laughs> Frank is in the shade of the stand. He, he's such a big man. Two balls and a strike. They throw over to first. The Mets will be here again tomorrow. Hey, how to cut a miss. Snap throw to first. Runner back. Two balls, two strikes. Hey, struck him out swinging. Arnie, I wonder if uh, that's why the flags there, isn't it? It looks like I wonder if that bothers the hitter. Now look at that, as it unfurls there in the breeze. 
It's right in front of the home plate, it looks like. Might distract the hitter a little right now. There's Mookie Wilson, switch hitter. Hernandez getting ready. Didn't distract the uh, <laughs> the Mets of the first two innings, but then it wasn't there. Then. The shadow <laughs> of the stands was not there then. One strike or nothing. The Cubs last shot would seem to be the bottom half of this inning when they have the top of that batting order starting with Sandberg, Hall, and Buckner. And if anybody gets on, Moreland and Johnstone. They're going to get back in the ball game. It would be dic there goes the runner swung and fall back. It would be dictated that it would have to happen now. Mookie Wilson, the hitter. Let's give the bullpen a bonus. Boy, they've done it again here today. They've been outstanding. One of the big reasons for the great improvement in the play of the Cubs since August the 1st, when since when only the Dodgers have played better ball and just barely, when even the Cardinals haven't played as well as the Cubs. Ground ball ought to end the inning. Big hop to Sandberg. Flips over to first. Come on now, we need some runs. No runs. One hit, no errors, one left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Five to two in favor of the Mets. When you're a big guy like me, people always want to see just how strong you are. But after this arm works, this arm always relaxes with light beer from Miller. The light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it tastes great. What I like about it, it's less filling. Because when you're in a hot match like this, you can't afford to get filled up. You have the time? Yeah. About <clears throat> 8.30. Yeah? Thanks. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. <clears throat> and less. Next. On Saturday, October 2nd, right here at Wrigley Field, thousands of dollars worth of prizes will be given to you fans during the game on Fan Appreciation Day. That's Saturday, October 2nd, Fan Appreciation Day at Wrigley Field. All right, we go into the bottom of the eighth. The Cubs will have the top of their batting order coming up. Ryan Sandberg will be leading it off, followed by Mel Hall and then Bill Buckner. You can make three in a hurry, you know, if you put some hits together. Bright sunshine on a cool day. Sandberg 0 for 2 today, walked and scored in the third. Scott Holman has only walked two men, and they both drew passes in the third inning. Here's a pitch. Right in there, a beauty, a strike call. One strike and nothing. Sandberg hitting only 207 for the year against the Mets. Breaking ball low. That's been his big pitch today. A ball and a strike. A left-hander and a right-hander in the bullpen for the Mets. Now the delivery. Here it is. Breaking ball again outside. Two balls and a strike. Now the delivery. Bouncing ball. That ought to be easy. Gardenhire has it. Throws to first. Easy out. Boy, we just can't do a thing with him. Well, he got some runs to work with, and he just put strong and steady, this kid. He's made a lot of pitches, but it hasn't affected him. I mean, he's throwing just as hard now. That Here's may, Mel Hall. That may be a little in this cool weather. Coming off a shoulder injury might stiffen up a little. Combined with what you pointed out, a lot of pitches had a lot of full counts. One out, nobody on. Pitch to Hall. And it's a little bit outside a breaking ball. One ball, no strikes. Bill Buckner on deck. That's an easy out. Right to Kingman. Steps on the bag. And Hall is retired. Forget about it. Two men up and two men down. Trailing by three. Here's Buckner. 
Well, you notice the difference when Buckner isn't hitting and Durham isn't in the lineup with him. Starting to hurt you a little bit now with the bull out of there. Hope he can get back tomorrow. Two men around, nobody on. Scott Holman into the windup, the pitch on the way. Fastball a little bit wide. Hops out of the catch and met. Bruce Bochy. Tall, rangy receiver, stands 6'5. One ball, no strikes. Buckner's 0 for 3 today. Wide ball two. Moreland on deck. The wind's not blowing as hard as it was earlier. There's a drive, but it's going to go foul. That ball was really creamed. But it was hooking and it landed in the seats. Foul. Barney remembered it for me to take a net out in the right field bleachers when we worked from, the, from there a week from Saturday on Fan Appreciation Day. We might catch some home runs out there. Two balls and a strike. There's a hit for Buckner like a bullet up the middle. Buckner singles sharply to center. That's his 190th hit of the season. His all-time career high for one year is 193. So that ought to be another career high for him. Total hits that he'll accomplish this year. Marlin has been hitless, nothing out of two, walk one. Good fastball at the knee. Jay Johnstone next, two out, eighth inning. The pitch on the way. Curve high. A ball on a strike. Holman doesn't look that impressive, but that's not what you judge on. He's been doing it, getting, getting him out. 1-1 one, one pitch. A little bit high. Two balls and a strike. He's had only one lapse of control. That was in the third inning when he walked Sandberg. Hall got a base hit. Buckter hit into a double play. Sandberg scoring, and then Molin walked. The Johnstone fan. Here's the pitch. They had a weak swing, and he fouled it off. Well, by getting three pitches over, he's got him a little unsteady up there. They aren't being able to sit on a pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Hard to believe this fella had arm trouble. Boy, he's pitching out there. The two-two pitch. There's a solid smack, and Buckner will hold it second. Moreland drills a single to right. Here's Jay Johnstone now, and he represents the tiny run. A left hander and a right hander in the bullpen for the Mets. The catcher, Bruce Bochy, out there talking to Holman. And here is George Bamberger coming out. The manager of the Mets. Pitching coach for years for Earl Weaver in Baltimore. More recently manager of the Milwaukee Brewers. And that's going to be all for Scott Homer. Looks like Carlos Diaz. And, and it is. Jerry Morales is picking out a bat. He's going to be the pinch hitter. Batting for Jay Johnstone. Morales has been contributing such 
important hits during this surge of the Cubs. Morales hitting 274, two homers, 20, four homers, 24 runs batted in. Well, Bamberger, as he went out there, sure, he's got a situation here where he needed to make a change, but he had to go back in there feeling good about Holman, too. He gave him quite a jab. Remember, tomorrow, the rag ball, which was such a popular item earlier this year, will be given to the youngsters. The first 6,000 fans, age 14 and over, will receive a rag ball tomorrow afternoon when the Cubs play the Mets. That rag ball is like a baseball, only it's soft. Your youngster can play with it and not get hurt. It's proven to be a very popular item. And that's why the Cubs are having the second such day of the year. So Jerry Morales about for Johnstone. You know that this is the first inning that the Cubs had more than a single hit. Now they had two hits in the second and two hits here in the eighth. The second inning. Here's Morales. Runners at first and second. Pat Tambler on deck. Carlos Diaz. And the curve is high and outside. You're watching Cubs baseball through WGN Channel 9 Chicago. Carlos Diaz. The pitch. Held up, ball outside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Runners at first and second. The Cubs trying to get something going here. Diaz was with the Atlanta organization. Won the Hausman deal, didn't he? Ball three! Yeah, that's right. The Braves traded Diaz to the Mets for Tom Houseman, a right-hander. Three balls, no strikes. Jerry Morales, the batter. Here's the pitch by Diaz. Ball four, the bases are loaded. So Morales gets a base on balls. Now for a long shot. The Cubs trailing by three. And the bases are loaded. George Bamberger coming out. A right-hander and a left-hander in the bullpen again. George prances out there, and apparently he's going to bring in, bring in the right-hander to pitch to Tabler. Yep, that's what it is. Well, Sisk is a big one. Well, he and Bochy as a battery might be the <laughs> biggest around. Sisk. Doug Sisk stands 6 2. There comes the ball. Off the bench. Leon. Trot out that Montreal secret weapon. Boy, that bench, what a jab they did up there. With the bases loaded and the Cubs trailing by three, he'll be facing Doug Sisk, S-I-S-K, out of Tacoma, Washington. Went to school at Washington State. A big right-hander who was with Jackson in the double-A league. Where he won 11 and lost seven this year. And had a brilliant earn run average of 2.67. With the bases loaded, 
Leon Durham. Batting 312 for the year with 22 homers and 87 runs batted in. Durham has hit over 20 homers and has stolen over 20 bases. The wind may not be as big a factor right now. It doesn't seem to be as to be blowing as strongly out of the north as it was earlier. The Cubs trail by three. And Leon Durham, who could put him ahead by one, steps up there. With the bases loaded and two out. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Diaz pitched to one man and walked him. Now Sisk. The big right-hander. Now Tidewater in 150 innings. He struck out 122. Ball low and outside. He also walked 112. Durham batting for Tabler. No strikes. You know that if the pitch is to his liking, he'll be swinging. That'll take care of this inning. A ground ball with two balls, no strikes. Right to the second baseman. So it's no runs, two hits, no errors, three left. At the end of eight, it remains the Mets five, the Cubs two. Kennedy has moved over to play third base now. And here is uh, Scotty Fletcher playing shortstop. Jerry Morales stays in the ballgame to play right field. And we go into the top of the ninth with the Mets holding on to the lead they've had all day long. They open up with two in the first and three in the second off marks. And they've been blank ever since. But the Cubs have not been able to catch them. The best opportunity came here in the eighth inning, but there were two out at the time. Here's Gordon Hire. He's three out of four today. Willie Hernandez delivers. Fastball a little bit low. Fouls it off, and the count evens up a ball and a strike. Bright sunshine, a beautiful afternoon, a little bit on the cool side. More of the same predicted tomorrow for the final game of, the, of this homestand. There's a little tap. Right back to Hernandez, throws the first for the out. Good reaction by Willie. If he doesn't get back there, that's a tough play for somebody. Probably Fletcher. One man out. There's George Foster, one out of four today. The Cubs trying to extend their winning streak to seven in a row. I've run a cropper here against the Mets, the weakest team they've played. There's a pitch. Foster gets a long drive to right field. A window hold it. Morales is there, and he has it on the run. Morales, a handy man to have around. He can swing that bat for you, and he can play any of the outfield positions. Here's Kingman. He's one out of three today. Two men are out, nobody on base. We'll have the lower end of the batting order coming up for the Cubs in the ninth, starting with Junior Kennedy. Here's the pitch. Fastball inside. Ryan Giles at the only homer of the game. Back in the second inning of Randy March.
There's a pitch into the dirt. Did he swing? Yes. They appeal to the first base umpire who makes a motion that he went around on it. The Brian Giles homer might have been the real clincher when the 2088 hitter it was 202 at that time. And hits a home run into the wind. You got to say, hey, maybe this wasn't my day. 1-1 one, one pitch. You know what amazed me? I don't think March threw but about one palm ball all the time he was in there. And that seems to me to be his most effective pitch. Yeah, and everything was up. Just one of those days. Two balls and a strike. They'll roll around on you once in a while. That's the kind of day you hope your teammates score a lot of runs. Fastball, high ball, three to Kingman. It was like Bird said when he got lumped up in Montreal the other day and we came back from a 7 nothing and won it. He said, how about scoring those 10 runs in the first three sometime? Three balls and a strike. Dave Kingman. Ball four outside. He didn't want that. He wanted. He wanted to hit. That's the second base on balls he's had today. You know, Kingman has walked 55 times this year. Struck out 142. Mike Howard's going to run for him. He'll probably stay in the game and play right, and then Jorgensen will come in to play first. There's Jorgensen. Howard running for Kingman. Fastball a little bit low. Five to two in favor of the Mets. Well, all the action took place in the first three innings. Five for the Mets and two for the Cubs. And nothing but goose eggs since. Yeah, we're approaching the three hour mark and duration there's a good fastball strike a ball and a strike we're in the ninth Mets lead 5-2 there goes a the runner there's a peg high and it's a stolen base Howard steals second And now the Mets have a man in scoring position. The throw by Butch Benton was high. Yeah, he muscled up on it, just took off. Two balls and a strike on the left hand hitting Mike Jorgens. He uh, took a half swing, poked it foul. Two balls, two strikes. Boy, we'll, we'll experience a pennant fever in St. Louis Friday night. The Cardinals are really been driving. They have a four and a half game lead on the Phillies. Hey, struck him out swinging. And it's no runs, no hits, no errors, one left. And Hernandez pitches two scoreless innings. Tidrow pitched two scoreless innings. Stein pitched three scoreless innings. Crowley didn't allow a run. And so the relief pitching continues to be excellent. However, the score isn't. Mets five, Cubs two going into the bottom of the ninth. Harry Carey and Lionel Hamilton from Wrigley Field going into the bottom of the ninth. There is Mike Howard playing right field. And Mike Jorgensen has come in to play first base for the Mets. Doug Sisk going for his first save. And uh, Scott Holman for his first major league victory. All depends what happens here in the ninth. There is Junior Kennedy. Fastball at the knee of strike call. The Sisk has a good sinker. 
Bottom of the ninth. The Cubs trailing by three. Kennedy one out of three today. A ball and a strike. We need base runners. Ground ball. Nice play by Gordon Heyer. And he got him on a beautiful play going far to his left. Gordon Heyer throws out Kennedy. Made quite a play, didn't he? Yes, he did. And what a difference between starting the inning with a base hit when you need three to tie and being deprived of that with a sparkling play by your shortstop. Well, he was clear way over in the past second base. Good stretch by Jorgensen. Now here's Butch Benton. He's driven in one of our two runs. This Sisk is a sinker ball that keeps everything down. Benton takes the pitch low. One Wood. ball, no strike. Gary Woods is already out. He will be batting for Hernandez. The Cubs' six-game winning streak in jeopardy. Swung, and he missed that sinker. Sisk, a big, broad-shouldered right-hander out of the state of Washington, which is where Ryan Sandberg hails from. A ball and a strike. Low. Two balls and a strike, one away, ninth inning. The pitch to Benton. Ground ball. Hubie Brooks has a long peg. In time. Two up, two down. Here's Gary Woods. Woods batting 266. Four homers, 29 runs batted in. The Mets are tied with the Cubs in a head-to-head -head battle as of now. And if they hold this lead, they'll be ahead. Eight games to seven. Gary Woods takes it low. Scott Holman can look back on a big play for himself in the third inning when he got Buckner on that double play ball. Now the pitch low, ball two, two balls, no strikes. There's a strike off. Two balls and a strike. Ball three. <laughs> three balls and a strike. Gary Woods trying to get something going here with two out. It can happen. Three balls and a strike. Swings with three and one. Bouncing ball. Hubie Brooks. This game is over. Tough to walk, our guys. One, two, three, nothing across. And the New York Mets have taken the season's lead over the Cubs in hand. Head to head battle, eight games to seven. The final five to two. We'll be back with the totals in a moment. My American friends introduced me to my favorite beer, light beer from Miller. Now I'm introducing them to my favorite food. With nachos, the best thing about light is, it tastes great. Not bad. With enchiladas, the best thing is, it's got a third less calories than the regular beer. With burritos, the best thing is, it's less filling. Carlos, what's this? And with jalapeno peppers, the best thing about light is, it's cold. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Carey and Milo Hamilton back at Wrigley Field where the Mets have knocked off the Cubs in the first game of a two-game series. 
by the score of five to two. I don't know how you felt about it. I thought this was the dullest ball game of the whole year. We set the tone early and couldn't change it. It was, uh, and this kid, Scott Holman, did a great job, and when he needed relief, he got it. And I guess that just about tells the story. You can't win them all. And the Cubs now will try to get another winning streak started. Five, ten, and one for the Mets. Scott Holman, his first major league victory, also got his first major league hit. He's now one and one. Doug Sisk, his first major league save. For the Cubs, two runs, six hits, one air. Randy March, the loser, 10 and 10. Our uh, relief pitching again was held them scoreless, but the damage had already been done. Well, we'll go get them tomorrow with the Birdman. All right, Harry Carey at Wrigley Field. Uh, by the way, on 10th inning today, our guest is going to be Frank Howard of Green Bay, Wisconsin. So don't go away. Now, uh, here's Milo to wrap things up. Reminding you to stay tuned for the 10th inning and our next televised game will be between the New York Mets and the Chicago Cubs right here tomorrow. Our telecast begins with a leadoff man at 1.15 and our guest will be farm director and scouting director Gordon Goldsberry. Our participating advertisers in this afternoon's game were Light Beer for Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. True Value Hardware Stores, True Value more than just a name, it's their way of doing business. Union 76 and your neighborhood Union 76 dealers who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. Canon, so advanced, Canon is the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography. Toyota Motor Sales and your Toyota dealers who remind you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. Zenith and yours, Zenith dealers. At Qu Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. And by United Airlines, people who fly for a living choose United. Executive producer, director, Arnie Harris. Graphics and assistant director, Joe Corneo. Sports editor, Jack Rosenberg. Bird against Lynch tomorrow. Till then, for Harry Carey and Lou Boudreaux, this is Milo Hamilton, and this has been another WGN Television 9 Sports presentation.